until it death saw the blood on the doorpost. Uh, they couldn't get inside that house. But what we're doing today, what our parents are doing today, is they're opening the door. Oh, angel of death, come on in. We turn the TV on. It's the angel of death that's coming through the airwaves. We're letting our kids listen to their foul, degenerate music in our homes. Not in this house. You can't control everything that goes on outwardly. You can't control the fact that your neighbor painted their house purple and your other neighbor lets their grass grow 12 feet tall and the property values are diminishing. But you can sure control what comes into your house. Yes, amen. And I get weary of parents who allow their fornicating, profane, unclean, foul-mouthed, rebellious children to set up shop in their house, and they allow their rebellious kids to live in their house on their own sinful terms. Not in my house. Mm. Amen. Remember the prophecy. A child is the one who's prophesying Samuel. God gives him a word for Eli. and He says, I will perform against Eli. All that I have spoken concerning his house from the beginning to the end, for I have told him that I'll judge his house forever. Why? For the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile, he didn't restrain them. Mm. That's right. Oh, he gave him a little slap on the hand and said, naughty, naughty. But he didn't cleanse his house, purge his house from their sin and from their wickedness. Can't control everything outwardly. But in your house you can. You know why the prodigal son left his father's house? Because he knew he couldn't sin in his father's house. Ooh, that's he that. knew he had a father that was had integrity and, and had righteousness. Uh, he didn't even have a discussion with him. He just took the money and left. Mm. <laughs> our homes are under assault today. Yes. And we're losing dominion in our homes. Yes, yes. The emphasis of this sermon is the church. Listen, without dominion, Pastor, people aren't going to get saved. I didn't have dominion that Sunday for whatever reason. I still don't know all the reasons. Gospel can't advance. Money will not flow. Sin is going to prevail in the membership of your congregation. This is the whole impetus of the text. You're going to conquer. You're going to drive out. You're going to establish a presence. My authority is going to be established through your lives. You're going to do right and you're going to obey. We're going to establish sacrifice and we're going to establish worship. And anyone unwilling in that regard... God is saying that it has to be removed. Mm. Now I want to talk about, we need to, you know, give this some legs, some something that we can chew on. So I want to talk about three areas, Pastor and disciples tonight, that you all have together, you, you all have to labor together in establishing dominion. The first is in the financial realm. Remember the first city that the children of Israel, after they crossed over the Jordan, remember they're an enemy church, but they don't have dominion. It's the city of Jericho. And God gave them very clear instructions how to defeat it. You remember the story. It begins in Joshua chapter 6. They were to march around the city, and then on the seventh day they were to march around and give a shout. And he had another instruction, though. And it says that all the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron are going to be consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. There were ten primary cities in, in Israel that were slated by God for defeat. Jericho was the first city. And God said, the wealth in that city you're not to touch. I'm laying claim on it, God says, uh, to go into the house uh, and the work of God. A lot of Bible commentators call this the tithe city. Uh, remember, your tithe uh, is the first fruits. Uh, the tithe check that you write is the first one you write uh, before you write anything else. Uh, the first goes to God. It's the first fruits. Uh, this was the first city, uh, and God laid claim to his wealth. Remember, these are former slaves. They've been wandering in the wilderness. They own nothing, uh, and they're going to be exposed to this incredible wealth. Uh, and God says, you're not to touch it. You're not to claim it as your own. You're to release it into the work of God. Mm. And of course, we know about the...